Good morning, Daybreak. Hi. Good morning. Hey, good morning. Hi, Daybreak. Good morning, Daybreak. Good morning, Daybreak. Hi, everyone. Hello, Daybreak. Good morning, Daybreak. Good morning, Daybreak. I hope you are doing fine. Good Sunday morning, everyone. You may be surprised to see me back in my study from where I spoke to you for many weeks over this past spring and summer. And perhaps you're wondering why I'm speaking to you from my study at home instead of from the church. Well, COVID continues to surprise us and present some obstacles to us each and every day. And one of the realities of trying to relaunch and reopen and again have worship at our church facility is that our volunteer team is stretched to the max. And uh, so it was because a number of them are trying to cover two or three bases that uh, we realized today that we were short-staffed with respect to Uh, having volunteers to operate the live streaming equipment on Sunday morning. And so uh, I decided that I would try to step up and at least be able to offer something to those of you who are watching from home. COVID is uh, something that just continues to surprise us and uh, throw wrinkles at us. And it's just something that we have to learn to live with. We don't control it. And uh, as you know, these are uncertain days. I do want to express my sincere appreciation to our faithful volunteers. As I mentioned, some of them are covering two or three important uh, roles. And uh, you just can't be two places at once. Uh, There's no way that that can happen. And so we're a little short staffed today. That being said, Let me also hasten to say that I fully understand why we are having about three times as many people watching from home as are coming to the church building on Sunday mornings since we relaunched public worship a couple of weeks ago. If you're following the news, you know that Canada's most populous provinces, of which Alberta is one, are experiencing an increase of COVID cases. And I believe that Quebec and Ontario have already officially declared a second wave is taking place there. And not quite sure about uh, BC. I don't think Alberta has done that yet. But as you know, the numbers in Alberta certainly are going up again. And so that reality has all of us just a little bit more cautious and uh, not as eager to get out and about as perhaps we might be if the numbers were headed in the other direction. And so thank you to those of you who are faithfully joining us online on Sunday morning. As I think I said, we have about three times as many who are still choosing to worship from uh, the comfort of their living rooms uh, via the screen. And maybe it's just because you don't like the thought of having to actually put on clothes to go to worship, or you like sitting around in your PJs, drinking your third or fourth cup of coffee while Pastor Tim prattles on and on and on. Well, whatever the reason for your choice to remain at home, we're glad that you're with us this morning. And so I wanted to at least give you a few thoughts uh, for some reflection as we worship online together this day. We continue to make our way through Psalm 34. Uh, David, as you know, is the author of many psalms. And I hope that by now, given the amount of time that I've chosen to spend in Psalm 34, you are coming to realize that Psalm 34 is considered by many people to be one of David's best or at least better psalms for a number of reasons. And I think part of the reason for that is because of the circumstances in which the psalm was written. 
And I've told you many times that David is writing this psalm hidden away in a cave on the run for his very life from King Saul who sought to do him harm. And uh, as David is tucked away in this cave, his temporary home, he has occasion to interact with God and uh, try to get a broader perspective, a larger perspective on just what is going on in his life. And that leads him to consider a number of very interesting topics. And uh, so I want to return this morning for just a few moments to Psalm 34, verses 12 through 14. Last week, we looked at verse 12 and verse 13. And uh, today, I want to look particularly at verse 12, which is a rhetorical question. And then at verse 14, which is the second part of David's answer to that rhetorical question. So follow along as I read to you Psalm 34, 12 through 14. David says, Do any of you want to live a life that is long and good? Then watch your tongue and keep your lips from telling lies. In verse 14, he goes on in answering how to experience longevity and quality of life. Turn away from evil and do good. Work hard at living in peace with others. We're talking about when the walls are closing in as we make our way through Psalm 34. And I noted last week that David takes a bit of a different twist uh, in these verses. Sitting alone in that cave, probably intentionally isolating himself as he endeavors to hear from God, letting the soldiers that were there to ostensibly protect him do their thing up in the front of the cave. David is tucked away trying to interact with God, trying to hear from God. And as he reflects on his circumstances, being on the run from an angry king, having just been chased out of town by another angry king, as he reflects on the fact that his life truly was in danger, David gets thinking about this matter of how to live a life of longevity, and a life of quality. And so, as I pointed out to you last week, he asks this rhetorical question in verse 12. The rhetorical question, I told you, is a question that is asked not for obtaining an answer, but more for the purpose of making a point. And so that's what David is attempting to do by asking this rhetorical question. Do you want to live a life that is long and good? And of course, most people would say, well, yeah, that's a no-brainer. Of course, I'd like to live as long as I can and enjoy as good of a life as I can. So David surprises us a bit by the nature of how he answers that question. Unlike our society, which is telling us that if we want to live a long life and a good life, we need to buy a membership at a local gym and make sure that we work out regularly and keep fit, all which is well and good. That's not the track that David goes down in attempting to answer the question, do you want to live a life that is long and good? We noted last week that David says longevity and quality of life are enhanced, first of all, by watching your tongue and keeping your lips from telling lies. And perhaps even this past week, since you heard my words last Sunday, you have had opportunity to be reminded of what a difficult assignment it is to control our tongue and to control our lips. For most of us, that's a lifelong assignment. 
And I'm not sure that it gets any easy for some, easier for some of us, given the nature of our temperaments and our personalities. So David, in continuing down this line of thought, do you want to live a life that is long and good? In verse 14 says, then turn away from evil and do good. Work hard at living in peace with others. I want to just unpack verse 14 for you for a few moments this morning as we ponder the second part of David's insightful answer. The first part, verse 13, of his answer may have surprised us by his attaching longevity and quality of life to controlling one's tongue, as to watching what we say, well, verse 14 now turns a bit and becomes a very insightful answer where David tells us that longevity and quality of life are enhanced by, first of all, turning away from evil. Turning away from evil. My friends, David says, do you want to experience a long life? Do you want to experience a good life? Then develop the habit, develop the practice of regularly, systematically, consistently turning away from evil. The verbal in the first part of verse 14, turning away, has a sense of continued action. Not just a one-time thing, but something that you need to continue to practice to do. Develop the habit of when you encounter evil, you're headed in the other direction. So I'm sure that many of you have seen one of those, I think they call them on social media, a GIF or a GIF, dot G-I-F. It's a little um, video clip and uh, they are all over social media. And as I was thinking of this idea of being someone who constantly, someone who consistently, someone who develops the habit of turning away from evil as soon as you encounter it, I couldn't help but think of that clip of the little baby barely having learned to walk that comes down the hall into a larger room, I assume the living room, and sees something and immediately turns and is headed back the direction from which he came. And the look on his face is priceless. He's barely keeping his balance, so he's focusing on that, and then whatever it is when he comes around the corner into the living room and sees something that he doesn't want anything to do with, his facial expression is, uh-oh, I got to get out of here. And he does a 180 and is gone as fast as he can down the hallway from which he came. I think most of you have probably seen that. It's a cute little video clip, but it makes my point. What David is talking about here with respect to learning to consistently turn away from evil to develop the pattern of learning how to turn away from evil. You know, all of us experience temptation. Not all of us are tempted by the same things. Sometimes I'm surprised to hear what certain people tell me they are tempted by. And they'd probably be surprised at what I tell them I'm tempted by. The point is, we all can be tempted into doing and absorbing and participating in evil. 
And David simply says to us, if you're interested in having a long life, if you're interested in having a good life, an enjoyable life, then be like that little kid in that video clip. And when you encounter evil, even when you're not anticipating it, even when you're not expecting it, let your automatic reaction be like that kid. Do a 180 and get out of there. Turning away from evil. It's an action that requires diligence. It's an action that requires us to be intentional about what we're doing. Before we can start the process of rationalization, oh, I'll just hang around here for a little while. I'll just hang out with this crowd for a little while. I'll just engage in this temptation for a little time. David says, no. Beat it. Do a 180. Flee from evil. Turning away from evil is an important part of David's insightful answer. Turn away from evil and do good, David says. Work hard at doing good. It's an idea that permeates the entirety of verse 14. Doing good. Did you know that there is a place for doing good, for doing good works in the life of a believer? I think sometimes we get this confused. The Bible teaches that we are not accepted by Christ on the basis of any good works that we can do. The Bible is clear on that. The basis of our salvation is by faith alone in God's gift of grace as demonstrated on the cross of Calvary. There is no good work that we can do to earn our salvation, but once we have placed our faith in God's grace as manifest on the cross of Calvary, one of the biggest responsibilities we have as Christ's followers in this world is to do good. To do acts of good. Christ's followers should be community leaders with respect to doing good works in the community and in society. That's one of the reasons why maintaining our Good Food Box initiative was so important to me as your pastor throughout COVID. People still have to eat. People are still hungry. And I am so appreciative of our faithful volunteers at both our Spins Food Ministry and our Good Food Box Ministry who risked their health to come out and prepare and pack up food boxes for hungry people to access by curbside service. Thank you, spins workers. Thank you, good food box workers, for doing what the scripture says is an important part if we hope to obtain a long life and a good life. You want a good life, David says? Do good things. Simple as that. Have a good day, we often say, and seldom give it a second thought. The way to have a good day, David tells us, is by doing good things. And then in the second part of verse 14, David says essentially this. And the Hebrew verbs are all kind of stacked one on top of one another at this point. 
doing good, working hard, pursuing peace. Obviously, in David's mind, they're all interconnected. There's a relationship between doing good, between working hard at pursuing peace. And so he throws out a number of verbals in an attempt to help us understand how important it is to work hard at doing good, to work hard at being peacemakers, if you will. Now, you certainly don't need me to remind you that we are living in times where there is all kinds of acrimony and uh, unrest going on in society. And there are a number of reasons for that. Someone asked me the other day, do you think COVID is to blame? And I said, well, I don't know so much if COVID is to blame, as I think it certainly perhaps has exacerbated some problems that we've had for quite some time. We've seen racial related riots. We see different countries, different parts of the world where unrest is stirring. I was hearing just tonight about uh, Turkey and Azerbaijan, I believe, uh, one of those former Soviet countries that are now uh, saber rattling. I'm not even sure what the issue is there. Turkey and Greece were having a bit of a standoff on the other side of Turkey a week or two ago. Everywhere you look, there is acrimony. There is uh, lack of peace. There's disrespect. There's prejudice. And words are being thrown and many times uh, things get out of control in a hurry. And we need to look no further than some of our neighbors to the south. They're not the only place. Canada has had its own share of uh, unrest among our indigenous peoples. Uh, someone asked me this week if I watched the presidential debate. I said, uh, uh, no, I, I intentionally didn't. I had a meeting and I was listening to the news before I went into the meeting. And so when I came out of the meeting, the radio was on in the car. And when I started the car, I heard this dreadful sound of voices hollering at each other. And I suddenly realized, oh, this is the U.S. presidential debate. Well, I don't derive a lot of enjoyment from watching two geriatrics fling invectives at each other for two hours. And I don't know what millions of people think is attractive about that. Uh, I wish we put as much time and energy into doing what David says here, work hard at pursuing peace. Work hard at pursuing peace. Do you work hard at pursuing peace in your own family life, in your own marriage, in your own partnership? We've seen a lot of each other as families, as couples, a lot more than usual during these days of COVID. Has it been an enjoyable experience for you? Be honest now. Some of us need to be honest enough to say that this task of working hard at pursuing peace, I need to begin that, I need to recapture that right in my own marriage, right in my own family life, given the stress and strain that COVID has placed on our household. That's understandable. Don't, don't deny it. And don't ignore it. Do something about it. Pursue peace. What about on the job? If you have one. 
pursuing peace at that place where you spend a good portion of every week. Are you a peacemaker at the office, in the shop, in the store? Whatever kind of environment your vocation takes you into, are you known as someone who is always eager and can be counted upon to be a peacemaker? To speak a word of peace when tempers are raw and emotions escalate. As I reminded you last week, emotions stress us. And that's part of the reason why David says implicitly, Stress is not good for your health. It's not good for anybody's health. And if you can learn to be a peacemaker, it'll pay off dividends for your own physical and emotional and mental health. And it will also be very helpful in whatever environment you sow those seeds of peacemaking. And so I leave you with this thought today, my friends. The correlation between obtaining what all of us desire, namely a long life and a good life, and the connection of that objective with our ability to control our own emotions and to bring peace into acrimonious situations where others are involved. Jesus desires that his followers be peacemakers. And long before Jesus ever came on the scene, David, running for his life from King Saul, hidden in the back of a cave where he has ample opportunity to review what's going on in his own life at present, seems to be thinking, you know, I made a mistake when I pretended to be insane back there at Gath and incurred the wrath of the king who chased me out of that town. That was a mistake. That was foolish of me to do. God wants me to pour my energies into being a peacemaker, into pursuing peace. These last almost three weeks in our home have been very interesting and somewhat different. Reason being... Our middle child, second son, Dallas, and his wife, Jennifer, left on September 12th for their new home in Oxford, England, where just today, October 1st, Dallas began his PhD studies at Magdalen College, Oxford, a college made famous in part as the place where C.S. Lewis taught and wrote uh, many years ago. Well, we have had, now sure, can I remember their name, senior moment. We have had uh, their two dogs, St. Charles, no, not St. Charles, King Charles, Cavalier Cocker Spaniels for the last two weeks here, along with our six month old pug. Boudreaux, the oldest King Charles Cavalier, is six, and uh, London, the youngest King Charles Cavalier Spaniel, is one. 
Boudreaux is a refined British gentleman who has no time, no time for the tomfoolery of the two puppies. So the past three weeks, I have laughed myself silly watching these two pups chase each other around our yard and around our house. The energy that they expend in pursuing one another tires me. I've taken uh, many video clips to send to Dal and Jen of how their dogs are doing under the care of grandpa and grandma back in Canada. And uh, it is unbelievable the energy that those two little dogs have in pursuing one another. And they've been an ongoing reminder to me of the work involved in pursuing peace. David says, work hard at it. Work hard at pursuing peace. And I watch those two young pups and I think I'm too old to work that hard at pursuing anything. Nevertheless, let's resolve together this morning as we conclude that in obedience to God's word, this coming week, we are going to renew our efforts and the accompanying benefits that come as a result of pursuing the role of being peacemakers in our acrimonious world. Join with me as we talk to the Lord in prayer in that regard, please. Yes, Lord, in response to David's rhetorical question, do any of you desire to live long and good lives? We all respond, yes, of course we do. What kind of a question is that? Everybody wants to live to be as old as possible and to have as good a life as possible. So yes, David, how do we do that? Well, we talked last week about the ability to control our lips and our tongue and uh, we continue to stand in need of your help in that regard, O oh God. And this morning we've shared just a little bit about verse 14, where David encourages us to turn away from evil. And there's not a day that goes by that we don't have plenty of encounters with evil. And therefore need his guidance and this reminder to turn away from it, just like that little kid coming down the hall to do good, to take the energy that would be expended in doing evil and to do good instead. And then also, Lord, we've been reminded to work hard, to put effort into pursuing peace, to put hard work into the role of being a peacemaker. You know, O oh God, that we live in troubled times. And so in response to your word and in response to what your spirit has said to us today through your word, we ask for your help in living up to that which Jesus reminded his initial followers of. Blessed are the peacemakers. We want to be blessed by you throughout the remainder of this day, throughout this coming week. And so we commit afresh to pursuing the task of being peacemakers. These things we pray with thanksgiving for the opportunity to be such and with joy in anticipating how you will be faithful in honoring our efforts. In the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you, friends, for sharing these moments with us today. Enjoy the rest of Sunday, October 4th.